And we move on to our next panel discussion of the day, which is on regional content, uh, storytelling at its best, for which I would like to invite Ms. Kuti Padmini, uh, MD and Chairman, Vaishnav Media Works Limited, and Alpha Cinefactory Private Limited, Rabindra Naran, MD and President, PTC Network, Sunita Thati, Producer, Founder, and CEO, Guru Group. This session will be moderated by Mr. Naveen Chandra, CEO, Mumbai Movie Studios. Over to you, Mr. Naveen, and welcome you all. Hi, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you, uh, thank you, Dinal, and thank you, Anil. Thank you, Sana. Um, I think, uh, you know, I can see Aran, I can see Sunita, I can see Kuti, so I think we're good to go. The, uh, you know, the good part is, uh, for the first time I'm seeing actually that the regional panel is on day one, which is, I think, a good progress, right? Mm -hmm. Although it's at the end of the day, which is which is fine for the first year. I'm sure Anil, next year will be the keynote, right? So regional should be the keynote next year. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, uh, last year was an interesting year. The year began with uh, Parasite winning the, uh, you know, best film Oscar for the first time in 92 years of the history of the Oscars, right? A foreign language film had won the best film. I thought it's going to be an interesting year. And then what happened? Pandemic happened. And in the pandemic, another strange thing happened. Reverse migration happened. People from metro cities started going back to their villages and towns. And they went back to Calcutta. They went to Chennai. They went back to Punjab. They left their homes in Bombay and Delhi and, uh, you know, and, and went back to Hyderabad. And so reverse migration resulted in a very interesting content consumption shift. Because now you go back home and your parents start getting your you know, OTT and connections and, you know, all of that. So you are introduced to new uh, new content. Of course, the winner of the Oscar uh, of Parasite, he very nicely put a line saying, as long as you can climb the one inch of subtitles, there's great content waiting for you. It was a terrific line. I think nobody has summed up, you know, regional language content better than uh, he did. I think he's, he's done a terrific job. So when the reverse migration happened, people went back. Uh, you know, they started consuming content in other languages. And I was surprised. I have a neighbor who's a Sadarji and he's been consuming Malayalam content. I mean, in my life, I never thought I'll discussing a Malayalam film with a, you know, with a Punjabi neighbor. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was quite a revelation. And now he's, he's a fan of Fahad Fazil. I mean, he wouldn't have heard of Fahad Fazil, you know, like six, eight months back. And today he knows who Fahad Fazil is. He knows what Malayalam cinema is, which is remarkable. I mean, it's a, it's a dramatic transition. What the pandemic also did, I think it, uh, you know, gave uh, a complete halt to the theatrical business. So product, uh, the theater business shut down completely. The big, you know, releases shut down. Uh, TV production shut down, uh, right? In a sense, OTT production shut down. So what was there was there. So what was ready, you started getting consumed on OTT. And so it was, it was a fascinating, I think, 10 or 12 months where the entire content industry churned, right? I mean, to the extent that 1980s content like Ramayana and Mahabharata, uh, you know, were being shown on TV, which is, you know, like 30, 40 years back content, were recycling. So it was fascinating. And there was Spanish content, right? Money heist on the Spanish content of very high quality. Content. So people are consuming either 80s Indian content or the highest quality international content from Spain and Korea and all. Very, very fascinating time. So that brings us today to a very interesting, you know, point in time where regional has got this entire effect of the pandemic, you know, through new content creation, through, uh, you know, old content recycling, through distribution shifting, whether it is from theatrical to OTD to satellite. Very interestingly, last January, Z launched a Malayalam channel and a Punjabi channel, right? Um, again, you know, I was fascinating that a television channel in a regional language gets launched by a media house like Z. And of course, again, three months before the pandemic, right? So who knew what is going to happen? Uh, so there is Z Punjabi and there is Z Malayalam. And then there was talk about Sun launching a Bengali channel and a Marathi channel. Sarigama launched a Marathi channel. So on television side, a lot of people started looking at expanding into regional languages, which is interesting. OTD players, you know, those who didn't have a regional strategy, some of them still don't have, but some have started a regional strategy. And a lot of other OTD platforms launched in regional. So there was a Marathi OTD platform launch. There was a you know, Malayalam OTD, uh, couple of Malayalam OTD platforms launched. In fact, one Malayalam OTD platform crashed on the first day because the movie that they had, The Great Indian Kitchen, had more streams 
you know that was streamed on that one single day the, the ott server also crashed and now you know it's it's almost thinking whether they should start or no bengali ott also grew and gujarati also launched a new ott platform punjabi also so now i think what has happened in the last uh, you know 12 14 months is very very interesting and to actually say that regional language content is now out there and you know trying for its space in the sun uh, you know vying for greater audiences uh, is not an understatement i think that's the reality of the of the game today so what we'll do today you know we've got three interesting uh, you know co panelists i've got which is arun who operates in the punjabi market we have sunita who operates in the telugu market Uh, but when i say operate doesn't mean necessarily mean that they create only telugu content they also look at korean content and adapt it into telugu or telugu content adapt into korean and so on and so forth and we have uh, miss kuti padmini who operates in the tamil market so there are three different big uh, language markets and uh, they operate across platforms so there are this television there is ott and this films and all that uh, and i uh, run mumbai movie studios which actually operates in 10 regional languages right i don't know hindi so uh, you know very nicely there is no hindi in today's conversation right so we're discussing only regional languages that i think is uh, is good focus uh, so to begin with i think what we'll do is we'll do the session in three parts right uh, the first part uh, let's look at content itself the second part we'll look at the consumers you know how have consumers changed during the pandemic and the third part we'll look at the cashiers or the commercials or the producers right so three different aspects of this regional game i will start with content then go on to consumers and then finally go on to uh, you know the, the 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 most important part which is you know where is the money and where is the money coming from and where is the money going so let's start straight away into uh, into into content uh, from a wearing the creative hats so everybody let's put on a creative hats and discuss saying has has the pandemic changed the way stories uh, will be told in the future are the stories the same has anything happened to the stories has ott i mean the kind of storytelling ott follows has that influenced in any way how stories will be made uh, in regional languages uh, and will stories in regional languages never be the same again i mean i leave it open let's start with rn for example rn let's yeah let's punjabi pre and post only content right let's put the content creative hat right now yes see for me i have a different perspective for right. many pandemic proved to be the biggest nightmare or disaster Mm-hmm. but i feel for those who could create original content those who had the real talent this has been the golden period right. if you're a singer if you're an actor if you're a creator you suddenly had a captive audience there was audience which was crying for content if you had good content they were ready to watch you day in day out the widest possible audience that any creator can hope for has been during the pandemic so those who were innovative those who were able to adapt and deal with the situation and could create content they came on tops they increased their reach they had diverse content and suddenly they don't have this pressure that i have to sell tickets i have to do this i have to do this i just have to create good content and if you can create good content you have an audience waiting this was not the case ever ever now punjabi is a very very peculiar market now you see it has emerged from the days of terrorism this is the only market which was absolutely finished during the 80s and 90s not a single production happened no cinema no theater no films no songs no television content nothing happened the revolution came when 98 PT, punjabi world came then etc punjabi came and then subsequently ptc punjabi came that brought in the revolution and that brought the punjabi cinema per se i would say to the front i mean i narrated with the great elan that in 2011 when we launched the first ever pdc punjabi film awards people were laughing at us because there were only eight movies being made in punjabi in the full year only eight movies they were coming out of the uh, recession they were coming out of the terrorism phase they were coming out of no original content phase and people said why are you doing awards only eight films and we said at least eight people have dared let's reward them let's recognize them let's motivate them today there are more than 60 to 70 films produced every year and released correct, correct. trouble correct. happened when the pandemic hit hmm. suddenly the breaks got applied cinemas got shut productions got shut so for almost one and a half years one and a half years 
there's been no production there's been no release the biggest trouble will be now when the theaters open okay. they now open they've just opened yesterday with only 50% capacity you can't increase the ticket price you can't do anything else because people will not come in you increase the price you can't recover the money and the producer is highly jittery if i release the movie now who will come and watch people are still afraid they're not going out so no matter you open the theater or do what i can produce a film i can i mean there are more than 100 films lying in cans right now waiting for release correct now most of them might not even get theater when the audience come back because there'll be such an influx of movies lined up a big stars uh, who are waiting there are, every star used to pace their releases so that it doesn't clash with the other now if they start doing that they're already 2 years late and when that starts happening they will be one and a half years late more so do you think we will not have any production happening there will be production happening there will be new movies being created when will they get release it's a catch 22 situation you are saying from a from a creator's point of view uh, i think it's a good time to be in the business yes there is a tremendous demand uh, for content and all is driven by ott and all all kinds of stories are now people are looking for all kinds of stories that's yes. that's, that's good news from punjab and theaters yes. open yesterday congratulations to you i think uh, you know the supply finally will ease out uh, the demand and we'll get there right yes sunita what's happening sunita you know i think i must uh, you know share this that uh, telugu market has dramatically uh, shown you know the way uh, post the pandemic although tamil had the biggest film release with master uh, you know in the between two waves of the pandemic but telugu clocked the highest gross revenues across all languages i think it's become the single largest uh, movie market across all languages so that's interesting how do you see content uh, you know now before and before i, I know you've done korean remakes in telugu and you've done local stories you've done all kinds of stories how do you think stories will evolve now after the pandemic i think as you said it's it's a, it's a very good time to be in the industry you know ott has taught us in the pandemic time that the consumer is open to a variety variety of stories whether it is something that is very refreshingly coming from malayalam or something that is coming from the international space it opened up our eyes it opened up the family viewing which was at one point limited to only television or even cinema going to suddenly the range of stories because as you know ott is considered a very personal viewing space where uh, every family member can just watch it on their phones or they can go to places where um, they can all watch together so suddenly the spacing also became like that creatively people are looking like you know i am in a good mood so let me watch something happy with my family i am in a bit of a sad mood let me just go and watch some thriller or you know whatever excites me personally so i can see that in my own creative team that there are a group of people who loves those horror thriller space and then there are people that love action comedy and uh, there is a overlap of this interesting merging that is happening it's it's a very fluid state to be creatively in um even the writers are choosing they thought at one point one writer is given to write everything for a big hero now you know the writer is actually choosing to say no 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 for me um the commercial box office is not my passion actually like lies in writing very inspiring real life stories um which is has been a very uh, great place for the ott because people are preferring real life experience stories and based out of real life you are seeing a lot of that so new genres are being born whereas india was always limited to box office big hero bigger than life stories we are now looking at something something compact uh, something that actually each of us can relate to i think that's one of the reason this the, the spectrum of storytelling has opened up um, yeah, that's how i would i would i would put it correct i think that's that's the fascinating piece right i think as writers people discovered that you can tell a story in two hours uh, in a film Uh, on one end of the spectrum you can also tell it in 8 9 hours uh, you know on, on ott and of course you can tell it in 100 hours on tv so we had these two ends right a 2 hour feature film and a 100 hour tv uh, series but right in the middle is when ott comes and says boss 8 hour story and 10 hour story so between the two i think there was a space the gap was taken by ott so the three formats i think have sort of settled down now uh, 
Uh, I don't think there'll be winners and losers. I think everybody will win in the end because there are three different mm-hmm. formats of storytelling. On the side, there are shorts. There are these thirty minutes and you know one hour films, which are also on the uh, operating on the other side, which have their own audiences, which have their own you know uh, you know loyal uh, base that wants stories to be consumed in shorter duration. And of course, right at the end is the thirty second ad, right? Where you tell a story in thirty seconds, then fifteen seconds, then ten seconds. So I think the the format of stories telling has really opened up in India, which is very interesting. Now coming to uh, let's say Miss Kuti Padmini and, and and Tamil and television, right? Now Tamil television has always been very very big, right? It's been it's been huge. It has been generating a lot of original stories. Uh, there have been a lot of stories. In fact, Tamil Nadu perhaps was also the first language where people like Rajni Kant and Kamal Hasan uh, came into uh, you know the mainstream Hindi cinema and sort of you know established. Uh, so there, there's a lot of stories and talent that's traveling outside of Tamil too. How has the television industry in Tamil Nadu fared over the last uh, 15 months of the pandemic? You're on mute. I'm oh. sorry. You're on mute. If you can, yeah. The OTT uh, platform now earlier used to be only for teenagers, the laptop boys, the young people. No more. Now it's all like in the entire family has started joining together. OTT. and uh, watching a uh, ott program right. so it has become like that and moreover always south has been very strong in their content it will be malayalam telugu or tamil most of the hindi uh, remakes were used to be from tamil and telugu right and in the, especially in the television also if you take today the youtube more than the uh, the series in the channel is doing better in the youtube in the repeat telecast right and a lot of short films have come on youtube which has done tremendously well extremely it has done well and ott whatever i have done in this pandemic time more than the tamil it has done extremely well in bihar and bhojpuri side right minus the tamil right. content right. but when it is dubbed into that language or subtitled into that language i think it is dubbed into that language it has done extremely well in mx yeah in fact what 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 happened a few years back uh, jurassic park was the first movie uh, that dubbed in about five languages in release in indian five languages in cross 100 crores first hollywood movie turned a group that uh, that believes in english as the, as a major language and you know that is exactly the top of the pyramid but hollywood realized that in india i mean there is a plethora of languages and unless you go beyond english uh, you know you only cater to the very small niche right at the top right and i think that is a great learning because hollywood films now for example lion king and avengers they cross 400 crores in revenues in india yeah but, but they have also crores. invested that big sum here see unfortunately when we producers really go with some excellent content we don't get that kind of money unless it is a big company which uh, has the backdrop uh, which has like let it be an aplas entertainment or let it be a ekta then the payment is totally different when it's a company like So the next uh, category of people when they approach many channels don't look into the content they look into the backdrop of the company which no, is also, a sad think, part also what's also what's happening and therefore i think we should switch to the next segment which is consumers right audiences mm-hmm. now if audiences television audiences for example today are also exposed on the same screen to ott content right uh, i mean now you're used to a 100 hour story and suddenly in the same screen now you get to see an 8 hour story right a tighter story a very you know with a lot of cliffhangers and you know everything yeah, we see they see it in one night even i see it in one night i don't wait for the next day the whole concept If the program it, impresses you then you watch it on the same night correct so because of this have consumers moved uh, do you think consumers have moved from television to ott i mean are they finding this not at all sir television has its own niche audience right ott has its own audience youtube has its own audience nothing is a competition to the other they said cinema will completely will be uh, thrown out closed when television came right so they started from making we were making movies in 20 crores now we are making in 300 crores right those days they used to pay the heroes only 60 lakhs 70 lakhs now the heroes get paid 50 crores and 75 crores right, correct in chennai vijay is paid 100 crores yeah That's so uh, no where is the where is the competition they are growing so, everything according to you according to you because i mean Uh, let's say the, the, the which is being paid 100 crores also because there is a potential audience out there who, of course, who of watches course. and because he delivers to a much larger mm-hmm. audience than he would deliver 10 years back 100% 100% not only vijay 
there are few uh, actors from south like mahesh babu or prabhas whose movie does around 300 crores of business right so they are also aware of it and uh, they know the market like rajini sir knows the market good so and they do extremely well that's a good uh, starting point to go to sunita sunita so now what uh, miss kuti padmini is saying is this big star films you know they are getting bigger they are getting more revenues etc so the question to you is that from consumer point of view right who was used in let's say in andhra uh, you know to have those big star families and their films and you know the fan fan bases and content of a certain kind which you know all of the uh, big box office films now he suddenly exposed to these unknown faces small films you know is the consumer finding excitement in watching these or he will go back to uh, you know the the big screen uh, you know fan system well in any day i guess the time is the important part for the consumer i think now he has to share that time um yeah. there was a time when television came everybody felt that sit nobody is going to come to theaters but then people still went to theaters now i think in the time given the depending on the kind of film dip, depending on the scope of the film and the vision of the film people will choose what they want to watch on ott what they want to watch in a box office and keep it as an experience for them so very similar to what hollywood is doing right now because hollywood's television content has phenomenally grown over the last right. couple of decades the quality of storytelling has been an inspiration for the rest of the world yes so because of that suddenly hollywood went into this marvel and uh, you know all this uh, bigger than life kind of films bigger screen so right now that screens will be catered in the indian space for us with the big heroes and uh, like rrr or pan india films with lot of effects i think that's where the segregation will happen even the consumer is very clear now where do i want to put my buck what kind of a mood i am in am i in a mood to kind of buy the ticket and go to the theater which means i have to buy for the whole family or do i just segregate this where like i like one of the conversations i had with the producers in tamil nadu couple of weeks back he said you know i will send my uh, i will tell my parents that i'll buy you the ott i will give my son money because with friends he'll go and watch in the theater me and my wife are happy with the television you know so i think the head of the household is also figuring out as a, where does because if a son has to go he has to give only a little bit of money for him to watch the movie if the whole family goes you know yeah, that most of the most of the big people they all have home theaters right mm. so you can have a wonderful viewing at home also but i yes. have a, i have a theater is a theater buying a popcorn and eating in the theater and clapping is a totally a different thing also so i have a slightly yeah. different point of view before i go to rn before i come to urn my point is that as a country right indians don't have any hobby indians you, they have a work life and they have nothing right so and we are not like we are not sailors footballers we, we don't do, we don't do nothing we just go to work and come back home and cinema becomes that escape from drudgery becomes that escape that you know as a culture it is a intrinsic part of everybody's life whether you are from kashmir or from kanyakumari or from assam or from gujarat it is a intrinsic part of your life now i'm i'm sure big spectacle films will draw more audiences no doubt about it more money will go it will become bigger they'll make more money all of that is fine but i am also saying on the other hand today you know only 14 crore indians have gone and seen a movie in the theater so there is 116 crore people who have never been to a theater in their life because of the way our theater system is organized i mean there are pockets of large number of theaters there are pockets without any theater even in a place like bombay all the way from mahim to andheri juhu there's only one theater i mean you talk about like 10 12 kilometers which which actually has only one cinema theater so i think we have an infrastructure problem on one side but on the other side what i'm saying is audiences will continue to flock for small films big films i think the difference will not be small and big but will be good films and bad films i think the only difference will be is it a good film is it a bad film that's it i don't think people will only see spectacle films i mean if you are going out with your boyfriend or a girlfriend you want to see a small movie you you okay i mean it's, it's a nice romantic comedy you'll so see- i would like to make a small request here sir yeah last time when i attended this conclave i found two young talent who had come to attend the seminar right and i gave them opportunity so i would request here the anil misanil vanwari and all his entire team to put up the writers and the directors name list contact phone number email so the producers can approach them and we can hire them 
So it will be a great help for us to get, get the fresh content from, because they're coming from various places. Last time I picked up one guy from Karnataka and one guy from Calcutta. So it was a different content altogether. And this should help uh, even the seminar participants and as well as the producers also to such a new out-of-box story. They generally say an out-of-box. So sometimes, you know, when you meet such people, we do get some excellent perspectives. No, I'm sorry to interrupt. So, we, uh, Naveen and uh, um, uh, Kutti Padmani, we've got that. And definitely we'll share with the, the numbers with you all. Continue, Naveen, Thanks. please. Thanks, Anil, for that. Yeah. So, Naveen, so I'm coming back to Aaron now. I mean, so essentially what we're saying is, I mean, that's where I'm differing a little with Sunita. I'm saying that all kinds of films will find audience in the theatre. We have nothing else to do. Uh, no, I just want to reiterate, do... Naveen, here that yeah. audience is not going to theatre only because the theatres are not open right now. Correct. It's not that the audience will not go to theater. Give me a chance, I will go to a theater. Correct. I, I, when I won't go to theater, it's an experience that I'm going for. That's right. It's not just the movie, it's the entire experience of watching a movie in a theater. That's right. why I go there. Currently, I'm handicapped because I cannot go. And that's why the other form of media, cinema in the form of OTT, in television and all that is doing well right now. As the dust settles, as things open up, Audience will find their way back to theatre also. In fact, I will go out on a limb, RN and, yeah, and Sunita and Ms. Padmi, and say that 2022 will be the biggest ever Indian, uh, biggest ever year for the Indian film industry. Yes. I think we'll gross the biggest ever gross box office next year. Uh, unseen before, I think it'll be the big year. But anyway, I mean, coming we are tired of being home. So, you know, I think it's, it's you can get that restlessness. I think as Telugus, we figured and tried to kind of, uh, you know, do that in the in the break of four months we got. Right, so, right. yeah. Absolutely right. So, now let's come to the, the, the final piece of the puzzle, which is basically money, right? Where is the money? So, having said that, all so kinds of content is working. Money, I have another point to make. Yes, yes, please. Point is that all our industry is geared towards making films in a certain manner. Correct. In an established norm. Correct. Nobody wants to break the mold. Right. And find, go and find new talent, nurture them, incubate them, give them resources, let them make movies, let them create content which they want to create. Right. We tell them, no, no, I want these songs, I want this music director, I want this star, I want such a story, I want to get this box office formula in. Nobody is geared towards saying, what do you want to make? What do you feel passionate about? The golden period of cinema was the 60s, 70s. When the cinema was emerging from the uh, clutches of Britishers and finding its own, and that's when the stories came in. That's when the directors and creators were making films which they wanted to make. Right. This is another time now with the coming of OTT that there are creators, there are uh, there are directors, actors who are doing cinema, who are creating content that they want to create. Right. Otherwise, there are a lot of films which are releasing now. You would never see them being made because there will be no takers, no distributors, no finances for them. Correct. Suddenly, the OTT and the television opening their mind, mindset facilitated creators to do good creative content. I'll give an example. We realize that every talent worth its salt rushes to Bombay to make films. And we are in Punjab. Where do, I, where do I find talent? How do I fund this? The entire industry is ruled only by singers. Only the singers are the actors. It's their films who will do well. Be it Gippy Grewal, Diljeet Dosanjh, uh, you name any. They're all singers who have become superstars as actors. Correct. Good or bad. That was the formula. The entire Punjabi industry was run by singers who turned actors and who were making films. Now, a couple of them succeeded, went up to Bollywood, but as industry, there is nothing that was being done. That's when we decided, let's seed this industry. Let's prevent people from going away. Let's get them employment at their home, where they are. So that's when we came up with a formula called PTC box office. You said, nobody in the world is doing it. We'll do it. We'll fund people who are talented, who want to create something. So every week, we will release an original one-hour feature film. Now, we took this step. Everybody said, how will you do this? Where will you find talent? How can this happen? Every week an original film, what are you talking about? Warner, 20th century, Sony, nobody in the world does it. I said, fine, they don't do it. We will do it. Said, How will you fund it? How will you find money? I said, I make an episode. 
I put money there. I will not make two series. I will not do two big events where I spend three crores, four crores. Let me fund this. So we started funding this independent cinema with a ten lakh rupees maximum budget for a movie, and the result was fantastic. They put their heart and soul in it. Earlier, what will happen? The creators will have to go to someone, beg for work. He'll say, "What you have done?" They'll say, "We have not done. We want to do this. I'll have to sell my project." Now suddenly they have a calling card. They go with the film, sir. I produced three films for PTC. This is my work. Look at it. And before they land up there, the big guys, the big financiers, they've already seen the work. Yeah, no. This so, is, I think, uh, Arun. This is a wonderful model. I think you are doing today to Punjabi industry what YouTube did uh, generally for the Hindi music. industry. Fifteen years music. Of music, right? People when YouTube created kitchens and yes. you know, yoga institutes where people could shoot videos, and I think it was a Terrific initiative. In fact, I have noticed something interesting even in the Malayalam film industry, and that's why one of the reasons, and maybe even in Telugu, what happens in Malayalam cinema, if you notice off late, the writer of one film is the hero in another film, right? He's the director of the third film. Yeah. Same guy, right? And you wonder, hey, wasn't he the writer? No, wasn't he the director? Is he the actor? So even if you see in Telugu cinema, there are a lot of these small camps of people who come together. Uh, one guy is acting, one guy is directing, one guy is writing, one guy is you know. Uh, A show running, so it's it's a nice creative pool of talent that is emerging and coming out of it, right? So, and the audience, back, there is audience, there is receptive okay, audience. Yeah. So now that brings me back to the to the final question, saying where is the money, right? So uh, you know, some regional languages punch far above their weight, right? Malayalam, there are only three and a half crore people who speak Malayalam in the country, only three and a half crore, right? How does a three and a half crore speaking audience Uh, clock, uh, box office for a movie of 35 crores, 40 crores. Puli Murugan, they say, is 125 crores. You know, how do you, how do just a small three and a half crore audience, which is, a, it's not an easy language that everybody can understand. It's, it's a tough language, uh, and and so they've done it. Similarly, let's say if you look at Tamil, you know, six seven crore people or Telugu again seven eight crore people, and how do they do 60 crores, 70 crores, 80 crore revenue when Hindi? Uh, you know, 55 crore people have that as a mother tongue. Another 25 crore know how to speak it. They don't clock such uh, uh, revenues for their uh, for their movies. Similarly, Punjabi, right? Uh, four five crore audience, and you know, last year we had these huge box office numbers uh, for a few films, Chalmeripot, and you know, I, I think it's fascinating. Gujarati also, you know, uh, again. So regional languages are punching far above their weight in terms of their box office performance, right? Uh, so there is something obviously working for the for the best of those. Even Marathi has been giving some excellent content, sir. Even Marathi has also been, in spite of being next door to Hindi and the home of Bollywood, right? Uh, yet they are fighting and for a small space uh, and giving good returns. So where is the money now, Aran? Where is the money in Punjabi and, where, and Sunita? Where is the money in Telugu? Uh, unlike unlike the other streams, Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Marathi, Punjabi industry is still in its nursery stage. Right. There is not a single film which you can quote would have done more than forty, fifty crores ever. Correct. In a year, there are hardly any films which will actually make money. Yeah, but Aaron, but Aaron, I'm coming from a different point. I'm saying even though there are very few films who do twenty-five, thirty, forty crores, but the multiple is huge. I mean, there are only five, six crore people who speak Punjabi, and you're getting a five x or a four x in the box of which is remarkable as a number. That's what I'm saying. It's rare. It's not a routine. Right. Not every Punjabi movie is making it'll money. Never be, never At be. an average, an every average Punjabi film is not in theaters after second week. Right. Beat anybody. Right. It's only a handful of stars who will last for a month or so. Others won't, and okay. they will make money by a wider release. Right. More, more money is coming from my releases in Canada, US, UK. Okay. Uh, that territory is almost fifty percent. Fifty percent of my money comes from there. Fifty percent comes from here. A pittance will come from satellite, and almost negligible will come from digital. That's digital, it. no OTT platform, no matter how big they are, respects Punjabi cinema even till now. I don't know. That's right. I mean, see, it has also to do with the kind of audience which is on OTT right now. It also yeah. makes a difference. I mean, see, Hollywood has learned this formula many years back. So today, an average Hollywood film, forty percent of the box, forty percent. Of the revenues comes from domestic box office. Sixty percent is international. Yes. So Punjabi, I think, is fifty-fifty, which is which is great news. Yes. Telugu, maybe you know, eighty-twenty or ninety-ten or something like that. And the other languages are still struggling. I mean, Bengali is still struggling to get international revenues. Tamil is still, I think, ten-fifteen percent. So I think there is 
there is some way to go but as long as the stories can travel outside the country there is tremendous amount of money waiting uh, you know international i don't understand when we are watching turkish film and korean movies and japanese films why not punjabi films why the otts are not uh, supporting them so we should have a proper issues. panel to push it right to issue the scripts stories the kind of stories stories because these are singers who have turned actors they're not actors mind you they were singers superstar singers so there was no factory which was producing actors and who would pursue film as career uh, if there was somebody who would want to pursue film as a career they would go to bombay and act in hindi cinema most of the bollywood stars are punjabi uh, be it the chopra camp or kapoor or they they are all punjabis but they are doing bollywood hindi they were not doing punjabi this was not the case in 60s and 70s where the prithviraj kapoor raj babbas uh, uh, prem chopras would do regular punjabi films correct it's not so right now the trouble is bad stories why they want a quick fix i mean i have a setup let's get together let's get this writer write me dialogues i have to put in six songs of mine because i'm a singer people are going to come to see my songs listen to them and just put in a comedy story this that that and I'm, my job is done i've got a film so the serious so, cinema so, is very rare correct also to to add to that yeah, it's a nursery stage it will graduate and once exactly. it graduates punjabi cinema will become the torch bearer of indian cinema abroad because the audience is huge there the potential is huge there there is audience waiting for good stories and now that think... is why we started we will start on a smaller scale but we will infect people with watching new meaningful punjabi cinema week after week after week correct. it will graduate into bigger cinema and to add to what arun what you're saying i think essentially what also happened is uh, for various reasons punjabi cinema has got trapped in the comedy uh, genre trap right yes. whereas if you look at punjabi history and culture there are depth of stories there oh, waiting to be told amazing stories and, and none of them so kismat i remember was the first movie a few years back which was which is a tragedy it ended in a tragedy and you know people said are chalega nahi because you know it's not comedy and all but people accepted uh, tragedy and it worked well right there was an animation film which did very well sar sar zade but i think the depth of stories have not yet come out in punjabi i think uh, like arun says it's going to happen i'm i'm sure it's going to happen now the like movies like chan pradesh where om puri amrish puri and all these sort of people were acting and tremendous concentration on the story and screenplay right, absolutely so as long as the regional story is true to its core right region it will travel a long distance uh, there is you know you don't have to make a international story there is nothing called international story at all in fact if you look at the best films they are not international there are local roma is a very very local story parasite is a very local story and so are our stories uh, and the more true you are to the region the more international appeal the story has uh, any attempt at trying to make it an international story because there is nothing called an international story i mean if you look at disney when disney makes a story in the us uh, you know the girl in philippines the guy in sudan uh, the person in bangalore and the guy in china they all laugh and cry at the same time Same. so you are basically appealing to a core human emotion that you know transcends across the world it's not that you're looking for a, a you know universal story because that doesn't exist yeah. you have to go to the core and and stories never end so i mean if you look at 19 2019 there were at least 10 movies based on world wars that were made in 2019 4 or 5 of them won the oscar you know 1917 uh, uh, and because there is no dearth i think pandemic will result in uh, you know pandemic will give uh, many more stories now I think we have not even seen the pandemic story. Time to do homework. Correct. Yeah, we we actually I think the pandemic stories will come out now. I think in in the next one or two years we'll find some. Amazing they already stories. are. They already are. They already are. So they come out already, more yeah. and more because there's so many stories about the pandemic that are that are yet uh, to be told. So, Sunita, yeah, what? Let's come back to uh, the Telugu industry, which has cracked the box office and sprinted ahead of. Uh, the tamil and become india's number one uh, you know let's say film industry by revenues during yeah. the so how do you see revenues now how do you see commerce how do you see return investments now from from here on well i um, i will not talk of the biggies because biggies always have the big heroes that will draw the people and uh, uh, it is proven with uh, you know uh, a pavan kalyan film or a raviteja film but i am very keen to talk about the mid range cinema Right. Um, as the discussion went, what is the percentage? Typically, the percentage on the box office dependency is about about close to fifty percent, sometimes sixty percent. Right. Now, that is something we need to be very careful about. Even though 
um, at some level, uh, the industry has proved that the box office is done well in the four months that it has been open. Honestly, I have to tell you that there has been equal number of films that didn't do well. So I think, again, as always, story is the king. We constantly need to think uh, how can we tell a different story where we can uh, bring audience to, other than the hero interest, the story interests need to bring them to the theatres. No, no, like I said, um, no big films, small films, it's only good films and bad films. I think it, it's, a, it's a horizontal thing, not a vertical thing. It's, you know, good films, yeah. good, films. good films will always work. Like Aran said, there's a lot of supply, but very quickly they'll be shafted out because they'll be good and they'll be bad. There'll be nothing else. You, you have to understand to make that 60%, the, the film need to be in the theatre for a certain period of time. Right. And holding that interest is the most important part. Um, it is true that there might be a window, you will get them there, but they may not sustain there or be there for more than a week or even four days in some cases. Because if the theatres don't fill, the, the exhibitors will fill it with some other film where they are going to get some revenue. So it's a, it's, it's a partnership that needs to work very well going forward, especially for this mid-range cinema. Um, because the big hero movie always will draw the people and something unique a little out of the box, as Ms. Kuti has said, will always work. But then there are always this big in-between cinema that need to that that need to sustain. I think that's going to be the challenge once the box office gets all cleared and going 100% occupancy. Yeah. Good. I think uh, you know we've had a very interesting uh, session today. I think it's been a wonderful uh, discovery of where regional cinema is headed, and I can only say that next year is going to be uh, again. I'm repeating. I'm going out on a limb. It's going to be the biggest year for the Indian film industry. That's a, you know, that's a given. Absolutely. Again, it'll be good content versus bad content. Nothing else. I think there'll be, yeah, Mumek Shakkar. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. I think... Uh, Thank you. Yeah, we are also getting into, uh, you know, we've got five films on the floor in four different languages. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure next year we're geared up uh, to participate in, you know, as many of the 10 languages that we want to operate in. So it'll be good year for all of us. Thank you all of you for being a great uh, thank you. panel. Thank you, Anil. Thank you, thank you, Sunita ji, and thank you, thanks to everyone. Thank you, Anil. Anil. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'll catch up with you. you. Thank you, RNG. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, hopefully next year we'll uh, region will be a keynote. Yeah, so we'll climb up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, that was really yeah. a great session, everyone. And you guys have touched upon so many important points here. And we thank you all for being with us today. Well, that brings us to the end of the Content Hub Summit 2021, day one. Once again, I would like to thank our partners for their immense support. Co-presenting partner, Intent Media and Z5. Co-powered by partner, Applause Entertainment and Tipping Point. Branded content partner, TVF. Support partner, PTC Network. Community partner, SWA, IFTPC. International Association partner, PAT. Media partners, Telishaka.com, Radio and Music.com, AnimationExpress.com. The event is produced and executed by ITV 2.0 Productions. On behalf of IndianTelevision.com, I would like to thank all the speakers and viewers for taking out your time to join us today. We hope you had a fruitful time. Do share your feedback with us on and do share your feedback with us. Use the Content Hub 2021 in your post of and tag official handles. We can be found at ITV News on Twitter and Facebook and IndianTelevision.com on Instagram and LinkedIn.